Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder. Please, welcome. But while you're here, make sure, like, share, subscribe, or ring the bell, and do all that stuff <laughs> so you get notified when I do all that testing. Today it's all about modular forward performance, more specifically, boosted modular forward performance. And you guys get to pick which one would you rather have, a Kenny Bell twin screw positive displacement blower with immediate boost response, or a Vortex Centrifugal Supercharger that charges on the big end. Which one would you rather have for your street car? And which one would you rather have for your drag race car? Let me know in the comments and let's jump right in. Okay guys, we're looking at a very cool comparison between two different forms of supercharging on a 462L mod motor. And the thing that I wanna know, what I want you to let me know in the comments is, which one of these would you pick for your street car? Maybe for your daily driver, and then maybe which one would you pick if you wanted to go like serious drag racing? Because maybe there would be a difference between those two, but let's check this out. So this is our modified, we wanna start out with the NA combination. This is a 462 valve with ported heads, cam, and intake manifold. But to show you where we are now versus where we started, here was our stock non-PI motor. This was a 1998 4.6 non-PI Mustang engine. We ran it with a set of long tube headers, an open throttle body, the stock intake manifold, stock cams, all that, and electric water pump when we run it a little bit colder with an optimized tune, which is why it makes more power than the rated 225 horsepower on the engine dyno. It made 265.8, so we'll call that 266 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 343 foot-pounds, 342.7. Now, after we added ported PI heads, we'll go ahead and take a look at our description. We added a set of Comp uh, XE 274 cams. These were actually for the, the 274 cams were for the early non-PI heads, so 500 lift cams. We had a set of total engine airflow CNC ported factory PI heads and then the PI intake manifold, an Accufab throttle body and elbow. And after optimizing the airfield and timing on this thing, we were awarded with over 400 horsepower. It made 406.5, peak torque checked in at 392. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our, our stock version. This is our modified version. This was a starting point for both of our supercharged combinations, and now we'll take a look at that. So what we did to begin with was we added a Kenny Bell supercharger. The Kenny Bell supercharger included an air-to-water intercooler. It's a package underneath. We had a uh, six and a half inch crank pulley and a two and seven eighths inch blower pulley. We were still running the um, Accufab throttle body and we were dialing the air fuel and timing and obviously with our fast management system and run in this manner with about nine pounds of boost at the at the power peak excuse me this thing uh increased the power output from a little over 400 to 580 horsepower peak torque checked in at 513 foot pounds take a look at the nice flat torque curve <laughs> kind of all the way across very close to 500 foot pounds for a for a really really long way so obviously the it would have a bunch of torque but then we did what we always do is you would change the blower pulley and add more boost and what you get is a nice little jump a railroad track gain i like to call it we uh, lost a little bit probably could have maybe tuned that back out and it would be straight all the way across but the peak power uh, was over 600 601 Peak torque checked in at 540, set, we'll call it 547 foot pounds, uh, 546.8. Again, you can see way over 500 foot pounds everywhere we tested it from 3000 all the way out to 62 or 6300 RPM. Good combination, intercooled. We ran this on a combination of 91 octane and 100 octane we did a mixture just so that we could run enough timing and stuff in it and it obviously it made good power we picked up uh, about 200 horsepower adding the supercharger at about 10 pounds of boost it did very well so now let's take a look and see what happened when we did the same kind of thing but with a vortex supercharger okay guys we've taken a look at the power gains offered by the kennyville twin screw supercharger on our 4.6 liter two valve modified as you can see here it had uh, ported pi heads it was a non-pi short block but ported pi heads cams and the, and the pi intake manifold just over 400 horsepower and th over 390 foot pounds of torque and it was a good modified 462 valve in na form it was a, it's always good to start out with that when you're adding boost because boost is just going to kind of multiply what's there but let's take a look and see what happened when we added our vortex supercharger 
Vortex and Trivical Supercharger. This is running about 10 pounds of boost. I'll go ahead and put the boost curves up in a comparison between the Kenny Bell and the Vortex. As you can see, as boost goes, <laughs> so goes power output. But with equipped with our Vortex, the combination, uh, the Vortex Supercharger increased the power output of our 400 horsepower 462 valve modified version to 623 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 547 foot-pounds. It's interesting to note that the peak horsepower and the peak torque were just within a couple hundred RPM of each other. And it goes to show you the way that a centrifugal works, that as we go up in engine speed, we're going up in blower speed, and we're going up in boost, so it continues to rise and make, make more and more power. I think we're running into a little bit of a, I would say we probably are running into a little bit of a valve, valve float issue there. We did have a spring upgrade along with our camshafts, but I think we're needing more spring rate there, the way that it fell off from 6,000 to 6,100. I'd have to go back and I don't think I still have logs on the tune and stuff to see what to see what that is. We only know what the timing is. I know what the timing in the air fuel is, but I don't know what we were doing. <clears throat> but it'd be interesting to see if there's there's definitely something going on there that should actually continue to rise. But it made good power, a good bit over 600 horsepower, so it's a good combination. But now I want to show you, uh, before we show a comparison between the Vortec and the Kenny Bell, I want to show you another test that we did while we had this thing on the dyno. And what we did was replace the Extreme Energy 274 non-PI cams, and we put stock truck cams in this. And I want you to take a look and see. Uh, yeah, it just killed the power. It went from... 623 horsepower down to 550 horsepower. So we lost about 75 horsepower with the camshafts, which would you, if you reverse that and look at that as a positive, going from the stock cams to the comp cams would pick up 75 horsepower on this supercharged combination. So you can look at it either way, but I wanted to show you uh, what happens when you run the right cams. And cams obviously make a difference in these motors because they make a difference in A and then they make even more of a difference once we add boost to the equation. Now let's take a look at a comparison between the centrifugal supercharger and the twin screw supercharger. And you guys let me know in the comments, which one of these would you rather have? Okay, guys, let's take a look at the boost curve supplied by each one of the superchargers on this 4.6 modified two-valve, you know, modular Ford motor. You can see the Kenny Bell fairly consistent all the way across, maybe a slightly decreasing boost curve. It had a peak of about 10 pounds and the where the Vortec had, and, and so fell down to a little over nine pounds out, out of the top here. On the Vortec, we started out at like two and a half pounds here at 2,900 and then rose to over 11 pounds out at the peak of like 6,000 or 6,100 RPM. So you can see there's a different difference in the amount of boost and the difference in the boost curve supplied by each one of these forms of force induction. So let's find out now how this affects the power curve and ultimately which one of these you would choose. Okay guys, now let's take a look on comparison of the power curves associated with those boost curves I showed you. We'll take a look at the difference in the power curves offered by the twin screw Kenny Bell versus the Vortex and Trivical Supercharger. So this was our Kenny Bell, a little over 600 horsepower, 547 foot-pounds of torque. And here is what the Vortex Supercharger did. If it's a little hard to show or a little hard to discern here, let's take a look at them one at a time. This is the horsepower curve. So the lower one down here is the Vortex making much less power down low. In fact, all the way up to about 5,100 RPM and then makes more power than the Kenny Bell up to 6,000 RPM. Kenny Bell making more power down low, but then less at the top, as you can see. We can also take a look at this as uh, in terms of torque, and the torque number is going to be even more dramatic because we're talking about mostly the stuff down low. If we take a look at the difference in torque down low at 3,000 RPM, we have 350 foot-pounds for the Vortec, and, and over 500 foot-pounds for the Kenny Bell. So a big difference in boost there, as we saw in the boost curve, and a corresponding big difference in torque production. We've got more power up on the top, the Vortec uh, centrifugal supercharger making a little bit more boost up there, and then the Kenny Bell curve kind of falling off at the top there. So the, the, the twin screw doing better on the top end, which is what we've kind of come to expect of these, these two types of blowers, but the positive displacement do, blower doing much, much better on the bottom. You can see the torque curve here. Let me know in the comments 
which one would you guys pick? Do you want all the, I mean, who's going to argue with 150 extra foot pounds of torque? Or do you want the like, Todd, do you want that down low for your street car? Is the, and the other thing to consider here are some things. Is one of these going to be more detonation prone um, because of the extra torque down low? Which one would be easier to run on pump gas? Which one is going to have traction? <laughs> Maybe you don't want traction. That's also good. Which one would you run as a streetcar? And maybe which one would you run like at the track with a converter or gears or those kinds of things? Would you want the top end charge? Would you want the low speed torque? Let me know in the comments. I'm Richard Older. Hey, as always, make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing it.